morning. So today I'm up at the farm property and we're gonna do, I'm gonna do a video on testing pond water. I'll show you a kit that you can buy online. I'll go ahead and test. One of my concerns over here, we have high phosphorus up in our fields and that does drain over and then we have a spring. Our pond is fed by a spring, but it does get runoff. So my main concern today is gonna be a little bit on pH, but mainly on phosphates because I know there's really high phosphorus up here in these fields. So anyways, I figured I'd just roll it in the description below. Anything I'm talking about, I'll link to it. So if you want to find it, you should see an Amazon link for it in the description below, or else I'll build a page actually, and it'll be on that page. So here we go. Okay, so I am down here at the pond. I'm making sure I'm getting water on my lens. <laughs> so we have a three acre pond and down over here it's spring fed. And of course we have a lot of fields up here where you can get runoff and you can get high phosphate levels. That's my main concern right now. There are products out there that will lock up the phosphates. And man, let me tell you what, some of those newer ones are expensive. They're like $200 a bag for a 55 pound bag and that bag only treats a quarter of an acre. <laughs> so there's a couple different ways you can research on it. I may even put a link to some products um, for a phosphate reduction where it locks up the phosphate and, and puts it down at the bottom if you have a high phosphorus level. But I'm gonna mainly, I'm gonna check in for pH and I'm checking for phosphates today. So it's a three acre. We actually pulled we just finished pulling all of the trees off the pond berm. If you haven't watched that video, watch that video, it's incredible. We had over a hundred massive trees on that pond berm. And uh, of course we had to, the pond drain tube failed right after we bought this property. So we had to dig that berm out, put in a new drain tube. So man, this has been a project for us. So anyways, all you need, this is the test kit, I'll link to it. Uh, it checks for a bunch of different stuff, pH, nitrates, phosphates, all that kind of stuff. Get a really clean bucket. Now, when I first came down here, there was a bucket down here, and I picked it up and it had cement or concrete in it. And I was like, you need to have a clean bucket if you're going to do this. So I tie a rope onto it, and what I do is I go out and get a larger sample of the water, and that allows me. I don't want to necessarily reach down and just take... You know, I don't want to just take it from the edge. I want a, a good sample out here is where I'm going to take it. Take it Look it. So now I've got my sample. So now I can take my kit. Okay, so inside your kit, you're going to have several vials four vials and then you're gonna have your solutions and you're gonna have this now let me give you a little tip on this I always I always forget how many drops go in for each thing so I made myself a cheat sheet on the back and so for I just wrote it I went through the instructions and just copied it down so for pH I put five drops that's it ammonia eight drops eight drops wait five minutes nitrate five drops five minutes wait phosphate six drops shake six drops of the thick solution shake again and wait for three minutes so it's all here i don't have to keep flipping through the instruction book every time kind of a pain to get it right at five so i'm pretty close to five there put it on a flat surface so the first one i'm going to do is i'm going to do my ph pH wide range, five drops. Make sure I'm getting good drops. One, two, three, four, five. Five drops. I am gonna take that, I'm gonna cap it. Don't put your finger on the test tube because it can skew the results. I'm gonna shake it, I'm gonna let it sit. We'll let that sit for about a minute. Once it, once it forms its color, then you're going to take it over to your color charts and you're just going to compare it to your color charts. And I am at about a 6.5. 
I am at about a 6.5 on my pH. So you can see on my pH, I'm at about a 6.5. In between 6.5 and 7, I'd say. So that's perfect. I don't have to worry about that. If I wanted to, what I've been doing is I've actually been putting lime into my creek back there, the, the inflow part, and it sort of treats the water as it comes in. I want bottle number one. I want six drops. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six drops. Bottle number one. Then what I'm going to do, cap it, shake. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put six drops of the thicker, of the thicker solution which is bottle number two. And you have to kind of squeeze that hard to have it come out. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six drops of that. Cap it, shake it. And this needs to sit for about three minutes. And then we'll take a look at our phosphate. We'll do the chart comparison. While that's resting, uh, should I do ammonia or should I do nitrate? I guess I'll do nitrate because it's just five drops. Nitrate. Five drops, shake, and wait five minutes. One, two, three, four, five. Stop. What are you doing now? I'm doing ammonia. That's bottle number two. So here's bottle number one, and on bottle number one, eight drops. Make sure I got a drop coming out. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Don't rush it. Make sure I have bottle number two. Make sure this, and you can use, this is why I test it, because this comes out quicker. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight. So here's my phosphate and you can see I am I am pretty much close to zero maybe 0.25 So I'm happy with that. Let's look at the uh, let's look at the ammonia Even though I'm supposed to wait five minutes. I'm waiting for Ryan or John to come here And I'm pretty much I'm pretty much close to zero on my ammonia uh, Let's try the nitrate nitrate is a nice light blue which is close to zero so i gotta say this this was really good because i was about to spend more money on phosphorus lockup products and i really don't need it what i probably need is i need some pond dye and a little bit of algicide out here and that's so i'm back over here at the house for a reason i have a pool and without a testing kit and knowing what certain levels are, I don't know how to treat it. The same thing applies to a pond and to your soil. So before you go spending and making assumptions that, oh, I have algae, so I must have high phosphorus levels or phosphate levels, get a test kit. Do the testing on it. The same thing on your soils. I say this time and time again. If you haven't gotten a soil test done for your lawn, for your gardens, get the soil test done. It's really important not to guess. Test it and make sure you're doing the right thing. Doc. Mm -hmm.